making a Stuart model steam plant part 27. Fitting this reversing gear is becoming a difficult job. There are some problems as you will see in the video. Something is wrong and it is time to call Stuart Models. But I won't do that just yet, I need to find out the full extent of the problem first. As I mentioned in the previous episode, these expansion links are laser cut parts. This is the second expansion link after I cleaned it up using my 1 inch belt sander followed by the polishing spindle. When I first filmed this clip I was unaware of the fact that the bolts holding the expansion link to the valve fork and the eccentric rods were too long. All of these bolts will need shortening, but not in this episode. This is one of the drop arms on the reversing shaft, and I'm about to tap the pin into place to hold it. Please note this is not a big hammer, even though it looks that way in the video. It's only one step up from a toffee hammer. When I fit the reversing shaft into the brackets, it's a bit too short. Not a massive problem, I know, but that's not the point. This view shows where I've ground away some of the bearing to accommodate the drop arm. And I had to do the same at both ends. This is no big deal, it's all sort of part of fitting it together. I don't understand why the reversing lever has only been drilled at one side. It needs to go all the way through to allow a pin to go all the way through. And once again, this is not a big problem. I simply drilled the hole all the way through using my Proxon motor tool. But as this is a pre-machined kit, I really don't think I should be doing this. This reversing lever is designed to be pinned to the shaft in exactly the same way as the drop arms using a parallel pin. Here's one on the bench. But this pin wasn't a very tight fit in the holes. In this clip you can clearly see the principle of how it's all going to be held together by using these small parallel pins. Stevenson link valve gear has a mechanism that moves the expansion link across the valve fork. And this is what came with the machine kit. Each of these links comprise of two nicely machined brass ends with a hole cross drilled in them and a pin to hold it all together. Here you get the general idea, this is just a loose fit. At this stage I wondered how everything was meant to be held together because the pins weren't a very tight fit in the brass parts. More about this in the next episode. As far as I can see there is something quite wrong with the geometry. Stevenson Link Valve Gear uses a system where you can lock the reversing lever onto a bar like this. But unfortunately this mechanism cannot work with this engine. And as far as I can tell the cross drilled hole in the reversing shaft is in the wrong place. The position of the reversing lever relative to the drop arm is not 90 degrees. When I make and assemble valve gear I always connect the reversing lever to the shaft using Loctite 603. And then when everything is in the right place that's the time I drill the end of the reversing lever through the shaft and put a taper pin in. I tried the locking rod on the top stud and on the bottom stud. To make this reversing gear work, this small brass fitting needs to be fixed halfway up the steam chest. And only then will I be able to move the expansion link the required amount of travel. The valve gear feels ok, it's fairly tight, but it will soon loosen up when I run the engine. It's vital that the forks on the eccentric rods and the fork on the valve line up at each end when you move the lever. With Stevenson Link valve gear you have the facility to notch up. Notching up means moving the reversing lever slightly towards reverse to make the valve move less and therefore admit and exhaust less steam. And when that happens the steam engine actually uses less steam. While I've been moving the reversing lever back and forth you can clearly see how loose the pin is in the hole. The rods that actually move the expansion link are only lightly pressed into position, but they're not under much stress at all. I'm going to try assembly how I think it should be done, because don't forget I do not have any instructions. First of all, I fitted the special long stud, as shown here. I used a pair of lock nuts to screw this stud into its correct position. Then I fitted a 7BA nut to it to hold the steam chest cover tightly against the steam chest. And now it's fun time, I'm going to use a taper reamer to ream a tapered hole all the way through the end of the reversing lever and the shaft. This is a very small taper reamer and it's really easy to break it, so here's a quick tip. Always rotate the reamer in a clockwise direction, this is not a tap, you don't need to back it off. What you need to do is stop pushing on the reamer, continue rotating it and then withdraw it to clear the chips. 
In this clip I'm refitting the parts to the engine and if you look carefully you will see there is a very small taper pin through the reversing lever and the rod. It was about this time that I thought a phone call to Stuart Models was in order. I spoke to Andy at Stuart Models and I speak to Andy fairly frequently when I order parts from them and I mentioned to him the problems I was having. Andy then said yes on the early valve gear kits there were some issues. So that's okay I wasn't going mad after all. Andy said he would send me some replacement parts, but that wouldn't be for a while. I've never had any problems with Stuart models. If things are not right, they just sort them out. And it doesn't happen very often, the occasional chilled casting, perhaps. I had a quick check of the dimensions and the position of the reversing bar. Would it fit it to the bottom stud? It didn't work. So I fitted it to the top stud, and it worked a little bit better. But on the top stud, the reversing bar wasn't long enough. And to be perfectly honest, I don't like the design where the locking rod is fitted to either the bottom or the top stud. I have an idea to rectify this problem. I think it will work and look much better too, and I'll feature that in the next episode. That's it for this one. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.